Hello and welcome to part two of my quick socket IO tutorial. Uh, in part one, we've written a very simple socket IO server. And what we are going to do now is write a JavaScript client to connect to it. So uh, one of the most convenient ways to deliver a client that runs in the web browser is to serve the client files directly from the same web server that runs the application. So uh, this is what we are going to do. So I'm going to create a public directory uh, and then I'm going to put all the files that are going to be served uh, to the client in that directory. So let's start with a index.html and here we are going to write a uh, a very standard uh, HTML page, uh, so head and uh, body, and then here we can put a title, socket uh, yo demo, and here we can write an H1 with the same name. Uh, and then we uh, we need to include the socket io uh, javascript client in this page so here i have the uh, the socket io documentation uh, this is the javascript documentation the reference implementation of socket io not the python one uh, so here uh, i'm looking in the client installation uh, for a cdn and I'm going to take, uh, th these are all valid options. Uh, there are a number of ways. I'm going to take the CDNJS uh, and include it here. Script source this uh, and that will be the uh, the client. Uh, now I'm, I'm noticing that this is 301 uh, the current version is 304, so let's change to 304. I'm not sure why the, the documentation is, uh, is out of date. Uh, so this is our, uh, our client. And then uh, we are going to have our own application uh, in, uh, with, let's say, index.js. So this is going to be our own client-side application. So we can save this, and before we write the uh, the JavaScript client, uh, we can test that we can serve this page. So uh, I'm going to open app.py, the Python, uh, the Python server that we uh, that we created in the previous part, and here I'm going to add a convenience feature: uh, the socket IO whiskey app class has this uh, convenience feature that allows us to serve static files. So we can uh, we can give it a dictionary that defines a mapping between URLs and static files and, and then the the web server will serve those files for us. Uh, and this is the most convenient way uh, so that we can get the, the HTML and the JavaScript files loaded in the web browser. So this is going to be a simple mapping. The top level URL is going to map to the public directory. So basically what we're saying is that all the files that are in the public directory can be accessed as URLs that map exactly to those files. So we can save this and we can now try this and just for additional convenience we can add a reload uh, statement here so that Unicorn reloads whenever the source code changes. So here if we go to localhost uh, 8000 we now get the index.html page. So very good. So now uh, I can split this terminal here and here in the bottom we can edit uh, index dot 
Node.js, which is going to be our uh, our JavaScript client. So we are going to create uh, the client. Let's call it SIO. And here we just connect. Uh, and in this case, uh, we don't have to pass any arguments. We, we can call the IO function, which comes from the JavaScript client. And it will basically make a connection to the same server from where this file came from. So um, in the case where the client, uh, the client application comes from a different origin than the socket IO application, then you will specify your connection URL here as an argument. And you can also pass options. There are a number of things that you can find out uh, in the documentation. But for now, uh, we're going to keep it simple and just make a default connection. And then uh, on this side, on the client side, uh, things also work as event handlers. So here we can say on connect and then pass a function. And this is going to be uh, an event handler for the connection event, this time on the client side. And in the same way, we can do a disconnect. And now we have two event handlers for uh, for the client. So for now, uh, we are going to keep it simple and do the same thing we did in the server. Uh, we can say connected and disconnected. And that's pretty much uh, our client uh, for now. So I'm going to open the inspector and the console. And now I'm going to refresh the page. Uh, and I'm going to refresh with the cache refresh because I want everything to be reloaded. You can see that uh, in the console we got a connection. And here in the server we also got a connection. And this is, uh, this is the SID that was assigned to this client connection. So uh, something that we can do now, uh, as an example, uh, we can stop the server. And here you can see that it triggered the disconnected event in the client. Uh, now you will notice that the client continues to generate errors. Uh, this is a, a very convenient and very nice feature of the socket IO protocol. Uh, whenever the client loses the connection to the server, uh, it retries. It keeps trying to reconnect. And these are these errors that you see here that, of course, they fail because I'm not running the, uh, the server. So the moment I restart the server, the reconnection attempt will succeed. And now we get a connected once again. Um, so uh, likewise, we can we can stop the client, and that is going to trigger a disconnect event in the server. Uh, but uh, I should warn you that, uh, as I mentioned before, we are not using a permanent connection at this time. We're using uh, the uh, this is called the, the polling transport. So uh, a disconnection is not immediately detected. The server waits to uh, wait, waits for some, some time, and when it doesn't hear, it doesn't receive any more polling requests from the client uh, in that period of time, then it will decide that the client disconnected. So uh, you, you will see in a few more seconds, uh, at some point, the, the disconnected event will be received. There you go.